Chair. Um, when was the role <coughs> of UK government? Um, I suspect, Minister, you're well placed for this as somebody who's across departments and the sort of alleged silo sort of thinking that can sometimes go on in government. Um, Philip 66 was quoted as saying that the issue being within government, whether it is UK or EU, is that government is organised by department. There is energy, there is transport, there is climate change. And it's about trying to get them to work together across the boundaries to see the whole picture and not just the picture that they see within their remit. I think if that could be worked on as well, that would make the legislation more effective at a holistic level. Um, are you working across government to help resolve the cross-department issue of, of refining, oil refining and storage of sort of move from refining to storage facilities at the UK and or at the EU level? Yes, but this is a cross-departmental review, so it involves not simply my department, but other departments with an interest, the Department of Transport, Treasury and others. Okay, and DEC has previously, previously um, commissioned studies on the oil sector in 2009, 10, 11, and worked in collaboration with UKPIA to agree terms of reference for an independent studies published in May this year. Um, in response to that, ESSA Oil stated um, that the rigour and openness of government in this recent stage of refining have been excellent. However, UK PIA stated at the end of this, um, the department um, consultation, there has to be a refining strategy for the UK that deals with concrete actions. Do you think there are going to be concrete actions? Uh, well, that's possible. I mean, that's, you know, that's what the review is, is, is there to, to find out. I mean, there may well be actions we can take. Uh, Mr. Owen opened up one area, which is the balance uh, between importers and refiners, how, how fair that is in terms of stocking obligations or, or duties. There may be, we don't know yet, there may be some very specific actions that we're able to take to, uh, to improve resilience. And um, I, I, I'm sure there is more we can do um, on the legislative and regulatory side to, uh, to decrease the burden and ensure that, as I said, the, the cumulative impact is, uh, is minimised. And, and, and when do you foresee making the recommendations? Uh, we're working, I think, towards the end of the year. So. Okay. Um, Shell and other global oil majors um, have exited the UK refinery industry. Um, is, there, is this of concern? Um, do the government think that they've got a role to try and attract oil majors back to the UK? No, I don't think it's government's job necessarily to to do that. Um, obviously, when 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 Corrigan closed, these these were things that uh, the government looked at um, across 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 the sector. Uh, but I don't really want to be drawn into discussing the strategy of individual companies or indeed the position of individual uh, refineries. Um, we showed, I think, I mean. It transpired, I think, after Corriton that the, the sector could cope. The resilience was there. But I want to be sure that the resilience will continue to be there, given the pressures that we've been talking about. And, and in the light of sort of changing global circumstances, which seem to have changed by the day, particularly in the sort of fossil fuel rich parts of the world, do you think the role of government in general is going to increase in this market or decrease? Uh, that's the role of government. I mean, you know, there, there will obviously be a role of government in responding to the various uh, pressures for more and more environmental legislation. Um, and those pressures are here, and those pressures are in Brussels, and, uh, and indeed there are international commitments. So there is certainly a role for government in weighing those various uh, demands and the commitments that we're being asked to sign up to, and making sure they don't impose unnecessary costs on our own uh, industry. Uh, but the oil market, as you've indicated, I mean, is is changing, and uh, the centre of gravity of uh, refineries seems to be shifting as well mm. um, to the uh, to the east. So, um, you know, I, I guess don't think that's a trend. Government can can halt. I, I guess I wonder whether you foresee a tension that so the refining capacity is moving towards autocracies away from democracies. Um, in terms of in the in the context of security supply resilience, our ability to actually have a functioning economy in the future, which ultimately is dependent upon energy and the cost thereof. Uh, that's certainly worth thinking about. It's not something I have uh, considered at the moment um, you know, as to where exactly 
future refinery capacity is likely to be around the world. Um, but obviously, part of our review is to is to look at uh, resilience, and we do that right across our right across the energy sector to make sure we're not over dependent on on uh, you know single or unstable sources. I guess finally, I mean, the refining capacity in this country is sort of predominantly towards sweeter forms of crude. Um, I think I'm right in saying that sort of North Africa, West Africa, that type of part of the world outside of our own. Um, do you think our def foreign policy and defence policy should reflect that going forward in terms of building resilience? Uh, yes, I mean there is. You know, we do look at these things all the time when we're considering uh, 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 gas um, uh, pipe streams, for example, or um, 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 our uh, dependence on uh, foreign uh, design or finance for our nuclear industry. You know, we do weigh up all the time the foreign policy considerations that across government. Yes.